All right, so I wanted to go over gaps um, when you're taking trades. So this is Euro AUD M5. I used to trade Euro AUD a lot, but my broker has very terrible spreads with EA, so I don't take them that much. So we have supply right here, right? So we're looking to sell at supply. Now, this is what gaps are. So these, the gaps will be all the in-betweens of two wicks. Let me show you. In between those two wicks left gaps, which is what it, what it is, is a smaller time frame imbalance. Okay. That's all, the, ooh, excuse me. That's all those gaps are, smaller time frame imbalances. We had this big giant push down. And now you're looking to take this because, I mean, we're traders. We're, we're trying to look for this, the push, the pull back where the supply is at, and we're trying to take the lower low. You know what I'm saying? We're trying to do something to that extent, and I get it. So you're looking for something like this. And sometimes poss there's possibilities this could happen. So you're trying to look for an M5 trade, and you're trying to take it for a lower low. Now. This is where we mess up at, because this is a break of structure. This broke structure. So this is the supply where the, the sellers tried to get back in. I mean, buyers tried to get back in, but the supply broke. So this does make sense for the break, come back to supply and continue down. But what ends up happening is this. There's gaps. This is why I talk about gaps. There's gaps above this supply, one right here. This one filled in that body to that. So that, that kind of filled that in. And we got little small gaps right here. And all those gaps have to be filled in. So basically, this whole move, <laughs> this whole move needs to be filled in. You're trying to take a supply that has gaps above. You need to check off your checklist that all gaps been filled in when you're trying to take the M5 setup. So now if this was an H1, okay, cool, whatever. You you or H4, you could get away with this. You're on the M5 though. This move has gaps, and even on a higher time frame, it probably has gaps too. So if the gaps need to be filled above your zone it's not high probability anymore. Gaps need to be filled in. And sometimes, you know, that, that could be a tricky thing because this could possibly be a good setup and go down. And sometimes I do take trades that have a gap in there. But you got to know what you're looking at. And obviously on a higher time frame, you'll see. But I'm using this for an example to show you that the market wants to come where the gaps are at. So here you are, you're waiting for the break of the candle. Let's do this. Here's that. All right, so it wicked above it, right? And it went up and it came back again. So at this point, it's too high up into the zone for me to even take this trade. I don't like when they go all the way up unless they're liquidity grabbing. So I'll be like, okay, let's see what happens. Now you got the move, right? And then these are tricky anyway, because I want the break of the candle. But the break of that candle would have been right there. So I would have been in this trade, right? It broke that candle. Above that high. So that's what a break of the candle. I mean, we I keep drilling break of the candle in y'all your mind so you can see it. So now you're in this trade, you're trying to take the lower low. I'm looking at all these variables. This could be a demand right here. It's the M5, but that can possibly be a demand and flip that thing back up. So if you want to take a little small one, that's cool. But if you're trying to take the lower low, keep in mind, we, we got a lot of demands here. This price action showing me upward movement with demands. Right. But, you know, that's just from experience. So I'm going to take these off and I'm like, OK, I'm taking it. So you're in profit. What about? six, 10 pip move so far. Let's see what happens. 
So it comes back up, wicks, and now look at that. Look at it. Now it's almost at your stop loss. And you're out. And look what it did. Filled in that whole gap. Have you ever had this happen to you? When we, I mean, it happened to us plenty of times on the chat. You know, when we when I give out setups, it'd be a great trade. But this was what killed you. These gaps had to be filled. And now the gaps got filled. I'm sure this is a supply now. So now it's tapping that supply. So I don't know what's going to happen. Let's see. Now you got the move that you were looking for. See that? Let me see. Brad. Da, da, da. So it's tapping that zone. And let's see. That was the move you were looking for. So, <laughs> look, how many pips was this? Because we don't need that much. With us, look, that's a 26 pip move right there. If we would have got in at the break of the candle, and let's say you got really, like, you, you understood this, because a seasonal supply and demand trader will understand this. Seasonally, you can, you can go to the last high like that. I've seen, I've gotten friends that do it. So that's a, that right here is um, that area right there. Let me take that off. Take this off. This area right here is what we would call a rally base rally, right? Where you have a demand and let's see, it rallied up and then it, on a lower time frame, it did this and it came up and now it comes back down to it. And it's a possibility you can do that. I look at things like this. We take stuff like this all the time. Those are one of our bread and butter uh, supply and demand sets. So a seasonal trader would have had them a good one to four off this or one to five because they saw the gaps got filled instead of taking that supply. They would have just said, mm, not going to take that, even though you could have got you a decent. What is this? If you got a um, aggressive entry, you would have got 18 pips off that move. But you fail to realize gaps need to be filled in. Imbalances happen. The market had a imbalance of buyers. It wanted to fill the whole move back in. And now once it fills the whole move back in, now you could take a setup to the next supply. And on the 15, you see, on the 15, that's a supply. On the 30, there's wicks. Wicks don't lie. And you got breaker structure right here. So the real move would have been right there. And you see how you see how it went down to that that demand and turned it around, man. I'm telling y'all, when y'all become seasonal with this, it becomes uh really easy. And look, it came back up there. It turned around from there. Liquidity grabbed it. So, and let's see what happens. And now you're looking for some sales if it doesn't, but. See how I play games? So the lower time frame, you could have had those moves. And now this, the M30, is probably going to come up there to that supply. But on the lower time frame, you already got your move. We, we're on the M5. We ain't, we ain't trying to do like nothing crazy. That move is all you needed. And see, there's more gaps to be filled in, too on the M15. So yeah, you know, look, I'm sure it'll go back up there. Let's see. Or maybe it won't. The market ain't got to do nothing. There it go. It went up there, filled all that in and went up more and filled in all of that, that imbalance. That's what it does. And sometimes y'all be, even me, I get caught up in this where I'm trying to catch this supply, then this supply, then this, and I'll have some small moves off there, but I'm trying to take a lower low, and this, the market ain't trying to do no lower low. After this big, sharp drop, it's trying to come back up here. You know what I'm saying? What happens after this? Still goes up. And right there, it dropped. 
Let's find out why this dropped right there. Can you see it? I see it. I see why it dropped. I was just trying to go to a higher time frame. So if you went to a higher time frame, there's the supply right there. And see, now on the lower, like, you see why it did all of that. Being on a lower time frame, you got to know the higher time frame stuff. You have to. And I bet you after this, then maybe it'll make a lower low. I don't know. We'll see. Let's see the mark. I can't tell you what the mark going to do. Now, look. Now it's coming down. See? It tapped that zone. So you was down here trying to catch these lower lows and didn't realize on the H4, it need to come tap this zone first, then liquidate. And look. On the H4, let's just say we wasn't trying to trade on the the um the lower time frame. This is the rejection candle, right? So I'm just taking the break, the break of that rejection candle. And let's just say I was coming down because price wants to take out these lows. It always takes out some lows. Look what you really got. A one to five. One to five move. Beautiful, ain't it? So that's what I meant by gaps have to be filled. Like even on here. Let's go to this. This left gaps. It left the imbalance and it left gaps. Wicks. Um, all these wicks. The In between the wicks. They got filled in in this move. And now this big move has all these wicks that need to be filled now. It's a, it's a cycle of imbalances and wicks that need to be filled. Now, all these wicks need to be filled. And look, it filled them up. <laughs> like, it filled them up immediately. I'm telling you, once you start understanding market structure, how wicks need to be filled, where imbalance is at, where the liquidity is at, where, the, where is the inducement areas, breaker structures, all the things that we need for smart money, this becomes easy. And if this is where price is at right now, it hasn't came back to this supply yet. So I didn't gave you a trade out, a trade opportunity right here. So these wicks are probably gonna be filled. Something right here needs to be filled. And we're probably, since it's on the downtrend, we're, lo we're looking for sales. I'm looking for buyers. So we'll get something like this and continue. That's what we're looking at. I gave you a free trade, a free trade idea on Euro AD. Go ahead, wait, anticipate, take the break of the candle, try to take the the dump down. Australia is definitely has higher interest rates than um, Euro anyway right now. I mean, better interest rates anyway. So even though that's subject to change in February, because Australia's interest or monetary um, meeting will be in February. So we don't know what it's going to do. But if it's good for Australia, this is going to keep dumping. So till then, peace.